This is Dubious Insights, and this video is about simple car physics, specifically steering physics. So making a car go forward and backwards is pretty easy, but programming it to steer is a little bit more difficult. And the way I did it is using something called Ackerman steering. And so with Ackerman steering, we take the front axle and the rear axle and we intersect them at a point, and the car is going to rotate about that point. Uh, so here we've displayed the circle that the car rotates around, and if we don't change the steering, our car will move either forwards or backwards along that circle. This is a diagram of an Ackerman steering model. You can see these linkages means that the two wheels in the front turn at different angles from each other, uh, which means that the whole car will turn in a single circle around a center point without slippage. That's exactly what we want, but we don't want to model complicated linkages. We can simplify that as modeling the car as having a center wheel in the center of each axle, and we'll use that wheel to determine where the car rotates around when we're plotting its movement. So if we hide the uh, cars and just show their outlines, we can see these lines go to the center of the axles. We have a car and a bus here, uh, the key, some of the key numbers for Ackerman steering are the distance between the axles, that's the wheelbase, and as well as the angle that the wheels are turned at. If we turn the wheels less, then the intersection point moves out and the uh, turn radius gets, bif gets bigger. If I change their turn radiuses at all, then uh, they'll turn in different circles. So here, you know, they're turning in different circles, and I'm not going to be able to get them back and to go in the same circle. The faster I make these things go, uh, the harder it gets to control. Actually, uh, since I'm controlling both of these vehicles with a single set of controls, I basically have a turn, a speed up, a slow down. It gets a little bit challenging to keep them both on the screen, really. So if I go back to just a car, I can take it, I can turn the wheels uh, one direction, I can stop, I can turn the wheels the other direction, and I can see that my turn radius shrinks or expands, and the line at which the car will be rotating on will move. And we'll use this to play different games, like steering and parking and driving and racing and all those things. And the trick here is this is really how the cars move. There's not going to be any side slippage. The wheels are always going to be moving in the forward direction, which is what you want out of a real car, and that's what we want out of our programmed car. Now I don't have those games right now, but what I do have is just a background with a parking lot and a road. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to park this car in this spot right here. This is an empty parking lot, you know, because of COVID, but let's pretend that this was actually a full parking lot and I'd rather not hit everybody else. And we'll see how we can do. I'm already doing badly. This is a little harder than it looks without, uh, without the lines on there. It gets much easier if I were to turn on the turning lines. Yeah, I'm doing horrible. So I'm going to turn on my lines, turn on my circle, and now this car is actually a little bit easier to park because I can see where it's going. And we got the car in the spot without hitting, without hitting too many other cars. The car is actually quite hard to quite hard to steer well when you uh, don't have the outlines or the lines on. And if you think the car is hard to steer well, the bus is really hard to steer well. It turns out the bus will fit by putting in two parking spots. So I'll try to go for these two parking spots, the middle of the middle, and see how well we can do. Probably already clipped the car there. Hopefully the kids won't report me. And that wasn't good because I would have definitely, definitely hit somebody. Yeah, okay, this is not super easy. I'm, turn, I'm cheating. I'm turning on a cheat. Okay, so I've got to turn in this way. And like I said, I'm going for the two spots on the top of the middle. And there we go. Park nicely in the four spots in the middle, just like we were intending the, <laughs> intending the whole time. The way Ackerman steering works, we've modeled the wheel in the center of the axles, one in the front, one in the rear. The angle that we turn the wheel, so here we've turned the wheels 33 degrees. That angle is also going to be the angle uh, that these two lines are at. So effectively, we have a triangle. It comes off of the rear axle line, the front axle line, and then a line between them. The front axle, the front middle tire, is always going to be traveling on the radius of this green line, and the rear axle tire will always be traveling on the radius of this blue line. So since we know the length between the wheelbase, here it's 2.875 meters, the green line is going to be 2.875 meters divided by the sine of our steering angle, in this case 33 degrees. 
and that gives us this 5.28 meter steering radius. And the blue line is gonna be the green line times the cosine of that angle. And so what we're doing is every time step, we're updating the location of this car at whatever frequency we want. I have mine programmed at 60 times per second. And so every 1 60th of a second, we will take this car's speed, move it a distance based upon the, dir the direction that it's pointing, and then we'll update its angle based upon how far that distance would be around the circumference of the circle. So if that distance took it 90 degrees around the circle like this, then we would update that angle to be 90, uh, 90 degrees different. And pi game, which is what I'm using to program this, will uh, rotate it an additional 90 degrees. I would show the code for this, but I actually uh, learned this from a great tutorial and I will paste a link to that tutorial in the description. I'd love to get things like collisions and uh, you know interactions programmed in, but that will be a next step. All right, this is Dubious Insights. Thanks for watching.